Hi class, what I wanted to go over today is some surfacing tips. I've had some students kind of confused as to when they need to unwrap something and when they can use like box mapping or uh, cylindrical mapping. And so I kind of wanted to go over that because you kind of have to uh, figure out a strategy of how you're going to surface things when you have a lot of things like in our case, an environment where we're trying to surface a lot of things. So a lot of people just think that uh, the way you do everything is just to take it in and you need to unwrap it and then we take it into Photoshop and we paint it. And that's one way to do it, but that's not the only way to do it. There's, there's, you know, several ways that you can approach surfacing something. So I wanted to show you a different way to approach that. So that's what we're going to focus on today is surfacing. What I'm going to do is to show you a way that I approach things, which is, um, I kind of, We'll approach this like we're going to do this wardrobe, like this is a, maybe a raw piece of uh, wood that's never been, uh, cert, you know, it's never been stained or anything and that I bought at Home Depot or Lowe's or hardware store. And then I'm going to stain it. OK, so I'm going to approach it with a kind of a what I use, you know, normally talk about is staining something or we're even uh, using like if we were really doing this an antique kit where we we'll make it look uh, old. So we want old look to it, too. So we're going to do all that without ever having to unwrap it. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover today is how to approach doing something. Uh, it's a pretty nice workflow. It's a pretty fast workflow where I don't have to do a bunch of unwrapping. Sometimes we want to unwrap things, but other times we can serve some that look good without unwrapping. And so that's what we're going to do in this demonstration. Okay, so I've got this um, wardrobe in here. And just to show you a little bit of things, how I kind of prep my scenes. Uh, You'll see that this has a bounding box on it. A lot of times, especially when you're uh, getting some pre-made things and you're bringing them in, you'll have bounding boxes. J on your keyboard will turn that on and off. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, texture this and stain it all within uh, your software. I'm going to be using Max to demonstrate this, but these exact same techniques can be done inside of Maya or Lightwave or any other software. Uh, so it's not like I'm just demonstrating Max. I'm just demonstrating a technique of how to texture in your viewport without having to unwrap things. Now, one of the things I like to do before I start is to get organized. Now, in Max, you have a, a list of objects over here, and Maya is called an outliner, and you have a list of objects. Now, initially, these are shown up over here as a hierarchy. So if you get down to the bottom, you'll see there's a button that says hierarchy. I list them as in layers. And I put things in layers, okay? That way it's easy for me to turn layers on and off. It's kind of like layers in Photoshop to keep things organized, okay? Now, you'll see that what I've done here is uh, I have this divided into three pieces, okay? Now, I usually, I don't use multi-sub-object materials very much. So a lot of people do that. I don't, I don't do that. I think it's a pain to do that. I don't think there's any benefit in doing that. For example, here, this is a piece of wood, and these are going to be metal. So I don't need to have those attached to a multi-sub-object. Just keep them as separate things, okay? And then this is going to be wood down here, too. That's probably the same wood that's up here. But because of the organic nature of it, I'm going to keep it as a separate piece so I can texture it separately, okay? Now, you'll see I've named things over here. And when I name things, I always, you know, that I want to, the things I want to cluster together, I name them the same thing first. So I'm going to call this wardrobe and then the top pop parts called main box and then wardrobe hardware and then wardrobe base and so it's easy to know those go together and then you'll see I'm a, I have them on a layer called wardrobe now the way that works is once you've got your objects you just pick the objects okay and then you have a button up here create a new layer when when you click that then it puts them into their own layer okay and if I click on that then I can rename this okay so I'll be able to rename this wardrobe Caps on there. Let's take those off. Okay, and so that's all together, and can hide it, and hide it, and such. Okay. Now you'll see. Now down here was the empty uh, layer that I initially took those out of. Now I wanted to do that to demonstrate demonstrate something here, which is deleting a, a layer. If I want to delete this layer right now, so I can click on it, and right click, I won't be able to delete it. You can only delete a layer when it, when there's nothing in the layer, okay? And you'll see there's nothing in this layer now, so I can right-click on this one, and now I'll be able to go down here and hit delete, and I can delete that layer. Now, you see the little blue icon that's on here? That's whichever one is active, which means if I make a new object right now, so if I come out here and I create a sphere, it's on this layer, okay? So you kind of have to remember to... 
uh, always come up here and click on your default layer. So you're always creating things in the default layer, not putting them inside of your actual layers that you have. Now you'll say I've already organized my lights. I've put some lights in here and I've already organized those onto a layer. So it's easy to turn those on and off. And I've got cameras made in here and I've already got those organized into a layer. Okay. Now, another thing is I see a lot of people just going, you know, camera, 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 camera that I name my cameras. Okay. This particular camera is for a close up. So it's a close up of the top of it, close up top cam. And then I've got a full cam. And so I name them. So it's easy for me later where, you know, because you guys are sending me files where you've got three cameras and it's going camera one, camera two, camera three. I don't know what those cameras are. So if you name things, it sure is easier to keep them uh, organized. Okay. So we're going to turn those off and just focus on our object. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn my grid off and uh, come in here. And what I'm going to initially do is just go ahead and put some mapping coordinates on this just to start off with. So we're going to go in here and uh, go ahead and bring our material editor. And let's just drop a standard shader on it right now. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and put this standard shader on everything right now. And then we'll go ahead and put us a checker in here just to check our mapping coordinates to see that uh, everything's kind of working together. And then we'll drop this off here. On the tiling, I'm just going to put something 10. Now, it doesn't matter what's in these numbers. It's just for viewing. Okay. And then I also need to click this button, which allows me to see it in my viewport. Now, you'll see right now I can't see anything because these don't have mapping coordinates on yet. Okay, so I'm going to pick my uh, top box, and then we're going to put us a mapping coordinate on it. So we're just going to do a UVW map, and as soon as I get it on there, you'll see I've got checkers on there. Now, they're kind of stretching everything because of how the coordinate is. It's a planar projecting down from the top. So what we're going to do is click box, so it's coming from all directions, but it still will snap to the object, okay? And so we want we want what we want to do is we need to make this a cube, and it doesn't matter what the size of the cube is. And now what you should have is checkers. Okay. Now, one of the things sometimes people get this and they're not checkers and they're still stretched and they don't understand why. One of the things that you need to do is reset the transformations. It's like we're getting these, you know, these are some pre-made things that you guys are using, which is fine. That's a normal thing in the industry. It's done a ton. But the other thing I see a lot of you guys doing, you're, you're importing, you know, your object and then you think it's ready to go. And the reality is, is no, if we're, if we're downloading something, whether it's, it's a free piece or something we buy off Turbo Squid or something, you're going to have to go in there and do cleanup and change it some. Okay. So it's not like I'm just going to import it and I'm ready to go. I'm going to have to do some cleanup. Now I've already gone in and done cleanup on this piece and I'll actually show you how I cleaned it up in another video, but. Uh, what I want to do here is just demonstrate the surfacing of it, okay? So one of the first things you should do is after you've scaled your object and you kind of get in your scene, you know they're correct, you need to come in here and to uh, reset the X form. In Max, there's a button over here, Reset X form. Uh, in Maya, it's uh, Freeze Transformations is what you're doing. And But these you, this button will be, uh, will be grayed out if they're grouped. So if you have these things grouped, you'll have to ungroup them, to go ahead and explode the group, then reset them, and then you can regroup them if you want to do that. So uh, I go reset selected, and that's reset those. If I actually pick them, well, you'll see there's a new X4 modifier on that, and then we just collapse it in. So we just right-click, convert to an editable poly, and now that's all. And we know that the scale of this object and the scale of our world is in conjunction. Okay, so let's go back, UVW map, box, and we want it to be a cube. Okay, and so there's initial coordinates, and you'll see those going right so on nice on there, no stretching. I want the same coordinate on uh, this one down here at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this one. Go down here, grab this piece, and just paste it on there. And now it's got the same coordinate, but I can adjust it separately, which I'm probably going to want to do at some point. So I want that to have a separate coordinate. Now, my handlebars and stuff, I'm just going to put a metal on that, so I'm not going to really put a mapping coordinate on that right now so now this is prepped to be able to me to start surfacing it okay and like i said i'm just using a, a garbage shader in here so we'll just set that out of our way okay so now i'm going to come in here and start surfacing it now 
Our go-to shader is the Arch in Design. That's the, the new uh, mental ray shader that's really nice. But I'm going to go down here and use some of these legacy shaders. Now, I call these legacy shaders. These are kind of, these are old shaders before you had Arch in Design. And Arch in Design is kind of a, an uber shader, an uber material that helps us to do a variety of different things. So I'm going to make this wood. So we're going to go down here and look at some pre-made wood. So if I open this up, these are all pre-made woods that are down here. So we have a lot of choices of what kind of woods we want to use. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm going to go with this uh, Andoroba up here. So I'm going to pull this in. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and place this on the base and the top part. So we just assign that to it. Okay. And now the way this wood is set up, I don't really, I'm going to, I'm going to use it this way, but I like this wood shader. It's a nice wood shader. The way that it's uh, created, it's just got the minimum things that I need. It doesn't have all the things that's in an arch and design. So it's got all the things I need. Now this has got uh, a bitmap in it. So here's the bitmap that's in here. But the way these are made, since these are legacy, they actually have an extra node in here, which is a bitmap node, which we don't really need. So I, I don't have a tendency to use these because all of these adjustments that are in here, with the exception of brightness, all of these are actually in the bitmap itself. Okay. So if I just drag this bitmap and drop it out here, okay, here's the actual true bitmap that's plugged into that one. If I double click, it has all the same settings in here. Okay. This one has settings like the scale of it, okay, the position of it, uh, blurring it. And this is all this in here too, okay. And here I've got um, tiling, that's the scale of it. I've got offset, that's moving it, okay. So we have all the same settings in here. I don't need this node, okay. And you'll see there's two of these in here because they're going into a noise node where I can put these two together and throw noise on them. And I don't really want to do that. So all I really want is this wood node and I want the uh, accompanying um, bump map, grayscale bump map. So at that point, I no longer need these nodes. And then I'll just plug this straight in. And now this is a much cleaner shader. And I'm going to manipulate from there. So I'm going to double click on this and turn it on so we can see it in our wood, see it in our viewport. So uh, there we go. And I'm going to rename this, okay, the shader. So it's called uh, wood at and Europa, and I'm going to leave it at that. And then at the end of that, okay, I'm going to actually put a wardrobe on this so that I know that this goes on the wardrobe. So we're naming it what it is and then what it goes on. This is very important that you name these things because especially we're doing environments that can get very confusing. You know, for example, if we're doing something like, um, Let's say we're doing an exterior of our house and we've got a yard and we got a sidewalk and we, we've got a driveway and the garage just open, you know, with a car sitting in there. And then we want a street and we're making varieties of concrete. So we're making concrete sidewalk and making a concrete uh, driveway and concrete curb. So we don't want to name those concrete one, concrete two, concrete three, which is what a lot of people name things. We want to name them for what they're on. So name it concrete. Yes. But then it's concrete sidewalk, concrete curb, concrete. Uh, street. And that way, uh, it's very easy for us to understand what's going on, much less if we're working in groups of people, everybody knows what's going on. Okay. All right. So we'll go in here and now we can see the wood on here and the pattern is pretty big on here. Okay. Now I happen to know that this uh, piece of wood and I'll go click on over here is square. So our cube is the right shape because, you know, a cube is made up of uh, square sides. And so I don't have to change, I don't have to uh, change the shape of it, okay? But I could change the scale of it, okay? So I can go to my gizmo here and scale, and we'll get a little bit closer here. And I'm going to non-proportionally scale this down so that this wood grain is smaller and something that's more along the lines of the scale that it would be on the object. You know, we, we kind of, uh, we've seen a lot of wood in our lives. And so we kind of scale objects based on the grain. So if the wood grain is too big, then we make the objects look small to us. So uh, there is the initial look of that. Okay. So that's on there. And now uh, the grain that's going to be on my ground, though, is going to, oh, not ground, but this uh, base piece is going to be off a little bit. Okay. Because this has been scaled from it. So I want them to match. So an easy way to do that is I've already got this UVW map on here is to come down here and click acquire 
and then I can click on it and it's going to acquire those coordinates. Now I can leave it on relative or absolute and really on this one it doesn't make any difference. Uh, relative means based on the pivot point. So wherever that uh, mapping coordinate was in relationship to its pivot point, it will place itself the same in relationship to this one's pivot point or absolute, which means keep it in the exact same place. For this, either one's kind of fine. And then what I'm going to want to do at some point is just make sure these don't line up. And you'll see how they're off a little bit because I did relative instead of absolute. If I did absolute, they would actually perfectly match up. Matter of fact, we could do that. Click on that. We'll go absolute. And then you'll see this grain matches up going across there. Well, I don't really want the grain matched up because they may be made out of the same wood, but their grain would not match up. And that's why relative is a little bit better because it, they have the same nature, but they're shifted off, which will be more realistic. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on my uh, camera here. And so we'll switch to a camera view. Okay, we'll do our close-up. And then I'm going to go ahead and render this. And what we're going to do is as we surface this, we're going to render it, and then we're going to uh, put them in Photoshop so we can kind of see our stages as we go. Okay. Now, on my rendering, uh, let me see here what I want to do. That rendering is set up for... The rendering is set up for 800 by 1,000, okay? And so what I'm going to do is right-click on this button right here and get current settings so I can make that button 800 by 1,000. Now I'm going to turn on my lock, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do a smaller render. We'll do this in about 800. And so then I'm going to right-click on this one and get current settings. And so now I have a proxy size, to, uh, you know, smaller size to render at and then a full size to render at. So we're going to render at that proxy size. And we'll go ahead and render this out. Now, when I'm doing these renders, I'm going to go ahead and pause this so you you know you don't have to watch the rendering. I'm keeping the quality down low. I'm not turning anything up because at this point, I don't care. Yes, it'll be a little bit grainy, but that's okay. I just care that we can render quick and get what we're doing so that we can get through this. Okay, so I'm going to pause it while this is rendering. Okay, so here it is rendered now. And uh, so we got a nice little wood grain on there. Now, it, for me, it's way too saturated, it's way too uh, brilliant, but I'm not going to worry about that later. I usually get all my uh, surfacing done, staining everything, and then I'll desaturate it some at the end. So now we're going to go ahead and just uh, copy this. Okay, there's a copy button right here. And we're going to paste it over in Photoshop, and here I have it already pasted. That way, every time we make a change, we're going to put it on here in layers, and you can kind of see the change, okay? All right, the next thing we're ready to do is to start doing the um, the surfacing on it, okay, where we're going to do our staining. And so we need to go out and get some uh, bitmaps that we're going to stain this with, okay. So what I normally do is to go, you know, you can go over here to Google. And I did a search for concrete. And I know that may sound strange, you know, well, it's wood. Why are we doing concrete? Well, that's because what I'm really wanting is not something so much that looks like concrete, but just something that has a regular uh, patterns on it, okay, that I can use for stains, okay, so I look through here, and I don't want something with big cracks in it stuff, because I don't want, you know, a, uh, you know, a concrete uh, look, I'm just looking for things that, like this piece, would stain really well, okay, so I look through those, and I always go through here, and I go size, that I only want to see large ones, okay, a lot of times I see people doing this and they're using small images, and then they're scaling them up, and then you, they get grainy, and you're seeing all kind of pixel distortions in those and we don't want to do that we you know we never want to uh scale a bitmap up we scale them down and that's why i'm going for large you can see there's a very large images in here you know this is almost 5,000 pixels wide and then we can scale them down in photoshop okay so i came in here and found some i really like this one i think i'm going to use this one i'm going to pick a couple here's another one here's another one so i just kind of pick some first and then i kind of evaluate those Okay, and uh, this one's pretty good. I could have used that one. I decided not to. I ended up deciding this one. I like this one. Of course, it's got this grass in it, but we'll deal with that. But I did like this one, so I chose that one as my number two stain. And this is pretty good, too. Now, it's got this concrete little chip in it, we, but we could rubber stamp that out. This one would have been a good stain. This one I thought was way too rough. This probably wouldn't have been a very good one to use. And I didn't like the spots in here. I think uh, it's going to be too kind of like speckly on there, and I don't really want that. So I ended up going for this one for my secondary stain. We're going to do two stains on here, and I'm going to use this one for our first stain, okay? All right, so let's go over here to Photoshop. All right, so for our first stain, I brought this in Photoshop, and this is really big. If I actually do my 
uh, scale to 100%. You'll see this is really big. And yes, it's got some cracks and stuff in it, but I'm going to scale this down so you really won't see it. And the next thing I did was I realized, okay, I really want this to be, it's too big. It's still going to be too big a pattern because this is probably maybe about, I don't know, six to 10 inches a uh, piece. And so we want to scale this way down. Okay. So once I scaled it down and manipulated it, it looked like this. Okay. So this is it scaled down. Now, all I did was I took the original piece and I'll just duplicate here so you can see it and control T and then holding down the shift key. Then I just scaled it down something like this. So now that scale that pattern is something I want and I don't want uh, this bottom piece. So we'll just delete that off of there. And then I'm just holding down my shift and alt in Photoshop and dragging it down, make a copy. And then we can do a, a mask on that and do a little gradient and soften that. And so we can kind of merge those together. So that's kind of what I did to do this. And then I, uh, I came in and did a little bit of rubber stamping and stuff. Now you can still see uh, patterns in here. I mean, a repeatable pattern. So if I was actually using this for concrete, I would not do that. I would, I would get this, I would work this till I get all that out of here. But we're just going to use this for stain, which means it's going to be very, very, very light and subtle. So we really won't notice that stuff. So uh, it's fine. Okay. And then here's the other one. Okay. So I did the same thing is I scaled it down and then I ended up with this. And that's fine. I still have a little bit of that grass showing, but I don't think you're going to be able to see that in the final piece once I use it. So uh, this is fine. Okay, so the next thing I do is I want to save this out. So we just select all and then uh, copy merge, which is, by the way, that's control shift C, copy all these together, then control N to make a new file and paste it in. Now this is too big. So what I do is kind of scale it to the size that I think I want to use it, which is something probably around there. Okay, and then I look at my percentage, it says 33%. So what I'm going to do is go in here and go ahead and do image size and then percent. And I'm going to go to, uh, let's say I'll do 30%. And there is the final piece that I'm going to use for my stain. Okay, then I'll save this out. Now, I always save the ones with my layers. I save those as TIFF files. TIFF files will hold the layers. And then when I'm getting ready to save the texture, then I save it out as a Targa file, and I save it out as a 24-bit Targa file. We don't want uh, to load something like a Photoshop or a TIFF file as a texture because then it's loading all those layers, which means it takes longer to read. Uh, whereas we save it as a Targa file, then it will, uh, it, there's no layers in Targas, and so it renders much faster, but it's still high quality. We don't want JPEGs because JPEGs, uh, are very low quality, and so we want to keep them. Even though this started off as JPEG, which is fine, but if I save it as a JPEG, every time I save it as a JPEG, it degrades it a little bit more and more and more. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to load uh, target files, and so I've already uh, saved these out. Okay. All right. So let's go back over here. All right. So now we're ready to go in here. Now, what I'm going to do on this shader in here is I'm going to come in here, and we'll just go ahead and get rid of that guy for right now. We don't need him. So what I'm going to do is stack these like in layers, okay? So I'm going to unplug this from my image, and what I'm going to do is come in here standard and put a composite in here, and then I'm going to plug this back in, and now it's just going back through there, and really we've not altered it any other than we've added this layer node in here. Now this layer node is really nice because it allows us to add layers just like Photoshop. So I can go in here right now and click this button, add a layer, and now I have a layer, just like in Photoshop, a layer on top of the other. And so it allows me to stack things, stack um, bitmaps in our case here. Okay. So I'm going to take this bitmap and I'm just going to hold down my shift key and move it. In Max, if you hold down the shift key when we move things or rotate things, it clones them. And I needed another bitmap node, so I cloned this. And now I'll just double click on it and go in here and change this. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my... Um, folder where I have my scene assets. So I've already got this all set up with a project folder, uh, wardrobe, texture, video, and then it's an assets. And then here's my uh, first stain. Okay, it's a target file, the one that we just made. And I'll bring that in. And of course, we can hit view image and we can see it. And now this I'm going to put in my second layer. Now it throws people off a little bit that these layers are backwards. So over here, the layers stack on top like what we're used to in Photoshop. But here they put them underneath, and it's because every time we add one, it kind of goes underneath it. So you just got to remember 
you know, this one is on top of that one because of the structure over here. Okay, now the cool thing about this is that's on top of it. Okay, so we're going to kind of come in and look at this close. We can see as we make changes. And so I, now I have blending modes in here, just like I have blending modes in Photoshop. So I'm going to go in here and click on Multiply, and I'm going to overlay this one on top of there as a Multiply. Okay, now just so that you can kind of see what's going on, initially I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to kind of plug that straight in. And we'll do a little region render here so that you can kind of see what this is looking like, like on here. And we'll just start at the top. And if we render it, we're going to get something like this. And we're going to see a little line in it right now. And that's because its coordinates are not correct. It has a set of coordinates, but the coordinates are not correct. Okay. All right. So let's go in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take this coordinate that's on here and we're going to actually copy it okay so we're going to copy this coordinate and we're going to paste it back on time on top but what i'm going to do here is i want to name these so this first one i'm going to double i'm going to uh, right click on it and click rename and then i can rename this i'm going to leave the uvw so i know that that's a coordinate but then i'm going to um do this that this is my base uh, wood is what I'm going to name it and then I'm going to put the number in it down here of the mapping channel which is one that way it's easy for me to know that this coordinate controls this base wood okay so for this one we're going to right click rename and we're going to call this stain and then we're going to stain this and it's going to be a map channel two so we're going to put two and then I change this to two okay so now when I go over here to this bitmap, if I double click on it, here's its mapping channel. I change it to two. So what's going to happen now is this mapping coordinate controls this bitmap and this mapping control controls that bitmap. Okay, so we're isolating them. So now what I want to do is to go to this uh, mapping coordinate and we want to do what's called, go down here to your alignment tools and do a bitmap fit. And what that means is, is we want to make the shape of that mapping coordinate match the shape of the bitmap we're loading on it. Okay, so let's switch to a perspective view here. Okay, so you'll see now it's no longer square. Okay, and what we're going to do is go ahead and just turn this on so we can see it in our viewport. And now you'll see that stone on there, that concrete on there. And you can see the reason we're getting those stripes is because it's not the right size. So what we want to do is to come in here and scale it. Now I scale it instead of changing the numbers because I want the proportions to stay the same. So I'm just going to come in here from the front viewport. And what I want to do is click on gizmo, right click scale. And then I want to scale this until this gizmo is big enough to cover the entire piece. Okay. From top to bottom. Okay, it needs to be a little bit bigger. And now that stain is going to go all the way across there on each side, and that's going to look good. Okay. okay. All right, so now if we switch back to our camera, and if we do our region render again, now what you're going to see is, We're gonna, okay, and here's the thing, you're getting an error message, okay? And the reason we're getting this error message, it's telling you. See, this says UVW2, wardrobe base. So I've put a second mapping coordinate up here, but I haven't put it on the base yet. And so I just need to ignore this right now. Uh, normally, you don't want to ignore these because it's telling you you have a problem. But I know what the problem is, so I'm just going to ignore it right now. I'll fix that after, in a little while. Okay, so now we can kind of come in here and we can render this and we can see that uh, this entire pattern now it doesn't have those streaks in it. So I'm going to um, pause this while this renders the entire piece. Okay, so there it is rendered with the stone on it. Okay. And so now what we want to do is to, uh, we're going to unplug this in here now and we'll go back and plug it back in through our layer. Okay, so we'll plug that back in. And so we've got this uh, stone on top of this 
go multiply. So it's just coming in here and kind of putting a stain on there. And let's render that and see what we have when we get that. Okay, so here it is with that rendered on there. Okay, so now a nice pattern in there. We're staining it. But it's too much. It's way too much. And this is the kind of thing I get from a lot of students when they first start texturing things. You know, when they first want to start texturing, they want to make sure I see the texture. What they want to do is, texture! I want to see the texture! Okay, and that's not really what we want to see. Everything should be subtle. We're, we're building things up in a subtle way, okay? So we want to back this off. So let's go in here, and uh, we've got this at 100%. Let's try it at maybe, uh, well, let's try maybe 60% and see what that looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and render it at 60 and see what we got. Okay, now you can see in this render how much better that is. Okay, very subtle pattern in there. Now, and I still think it's a little heavy. I would probably bring it down a little bit more, but I'm not going to do my final adjustments until I get uh, our next stain on there. So we're going to put another stain on here. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to come in here on this composite and we're going to add another layer. Okay, so I'm just going to take this one, hold down my shift key. I'm going to put that one in here and then double click on that. And we're going to load in our second stain in there. Okay, now this stain I'm going to put on channel three and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to copy this UV uh, map and we're going to paste it back on. And then we're going to rename this one and we're going to call this one stain three okay and then i'm going to tell it to use mapping coordinate three okay uh, let's go ahead and go from our perspective view again okay so i'm going to do the same thing in here now what i'm going to do is to turn this one on so i can see it in the viewport okay so so what we want to do is now we need to make sure this one is correct also. So we're going to do a bitmap fit on it to make sure we're not stretching it in any way. So we'll go to our second and then it's going to scale that one. And then we're going to do the same thing again where we'll scale that up until it's big enough to cross over the entire piece. And then we're going to stain with that. Okay, let's go in here a little bit bigger like that. Okay, so we'll go back to our camera view again. And then we're going to do the same thing on here. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll turn that one on to multiply. And let's uh, see what we get with that one when we render it. Okay, there's with the new stain on there. Uh, it's pretty powerful. We still have 100%. We're going to want to cut it back down, but I do like these kind of little marks in here. It's almost like knots, you know, some uh, irregular nature to it. But let's try some different blending modes in here. Now, one of the things you can do on your blending modes is if you just click in here, then you can arrow down and you can go through your blending modes to kind of see what it's going to do to it. Okay, so you can just, you know, play with different ways. Oh, I kind of like that color dodge, kind of like that. Spotlight's pretty nice. We might could turn that down and that still work. Let's try that. Let's go with, say, maybe a 60% on a spotlight, and let's see what that gets us. Now, a lot of this is kind of mad scientist stuff. You just kind of have to play with it and render examples and then just look at them. Okay, so let's try this one. Okay, that looks pretty good. Still got that in there, but we brought it down. I still think this is way too much pattern on it, but we're getting in the ballpark of what I want now. Okay, so you can see by starting with your base coat and then coming in here and we're staining on top different mapping coordinates so I can control the different bitmaps separately. I'm getting a pretty nice lush look with this. Okay, but let's do some other stuff too. Okay, I want to show you some other things that you can do also. Okay, so that's a pretty nice node structure. Okay, but uh, what I might want is to be able to come in here and uh, to desaturate it a little bit, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is pull in a color correction node. So we'll come in here. Open up our maps. Color correction. And we're just going to drop that right in here. Oops, I didn't get it. This is kind of a little a shortcut. If you drop it right on there, it'll uh, open it up in there. And now we can desaturate this some. So I can come in here on my saturation and pull my saturation so it's not as dominant. Okay. But another cool thing is I'm going to hold on my shift key and I'm going to pull this down. And I'm actually going to do another version of this in which that I'm going to shift it and make it a little bit. Let's shift the Q. Let's shift the darkness so we're going to make this one a little bit darker and we'll have to desaturate that a little bit more okay and then what i'm going to do is kind of blend these two together okay so to do that i'm going to do a little sidestep here for a few minutes okay what i'm going to do is come in here and get a standard shader and i always do this and this is one of the things that so my students really fall down on by not doing this. Uh, I'm actually going to grab and apply this standard shader to it just for a few minutes to just kind of measure something. So in my diffuse, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a procedural texture in here. I'm going to use the one called smoke. Okay. And you can tell it to show it in your viewport, but it really doesn't show it correctly in your viewport. You really have to kind of render this. And I don't want to render the whole thing, so let's just do a region render and see what, what we're trying to do is see our patterning that it's putting on this. Okay, and we can see this pattern's pretty big. Okay, so we're going to kick this pattern down. And let's try maybe five. Let's render there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I still think I want to go up down a little bit further from that. And I'm going to go with a, say, 3.5. Maybe let's go with that. Let's try that, see what we get with that. Okay, that's, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, what we're going to do with this is use this as a mask to blend between the two woods so that there's a variation in the coloration of the woods instead of a similar color all the way through it. Now, the other thing we're going to do is the thing called clamping it, which means that we want to control the edge of this not to be such a soft and mar marshmallow to be harder. Now, some procedural textures have an output node built into those. So if I was to use something like, uh, say, noise, okay, you'll see the noise has an output node built into it. And this is where we do our clamping. But a smoke does not. So there's a separate output node that you can bring in. So we just have to go down here, output, and we bring and drop that in. And it's the same thing as that other one before. All it's doing is passing through it now. But now I can do it here and do what's called clamping. And here's how this works. You go enable color map. Now, this is the slope of the gradation of the side of the edge of this between the dark and light. So what I want to do is to make this less of an e even slope. So if I come here, add point, I can add points onto this line. And I want to add two, and I usually start with them right in the middle. And then what I want to do is move this one straight down so that it's uh, straight across from the black, and then this one straight up right over the top. And now that's going to make everything have a hard edge. Okay, now you can see my pattern kind of uh, disappeared. So all I have to do is grab both of these and slide them left or right. If I need more black, then I slide them to the right, and you'll see down here I'm adding more black. But in our case, we need more white, so we're going to slide it this way, and then more of our white's going to pop in. And so we're going to go with something like that. Okay. So now let's render this. Okay. And another thing we can do in here is on the smoke, you have a thing called phase, and that's the, the same pattern, but just a movement of the pattern. So I'm going to change the phase here for a second. It'll move the pattern. And right now, I think we're not getting enough uh, white. And maybe it's 
So let's just go ahead and pull this over a little bit more and see what we're getting. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, so now we're going to use this as a mask between those two colors that we had. Okay, so now what we're going to do is come back in. We're going to put our original shader back on it, and then we're going to unplug this. And then we're going to take these two nodes, and we're going to come in here and get a mix node. Okay, a mix node allows me to mix between two pieces, and so I can put both of these in there plug in so we're mixing these two together and by default it's a percentage I can mix these together by a percentage of them it's kind of like a, a gradation but what I'm going to do is put a mask in here and now this pattern is going to control how these mix together okay all right so let's go in here and let's go ahead and render the whole thing and I'm going to pause it while it renders it Okay, so here's what it looked like. Okay, and so now you can see I'm varying the actual wood itself, just the coloration of the wood. Okay, now that's too much, but when I first uh, do it, I want it to be too much. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here on our clamp, and now we want to start softening this slope. And as I soften the slope, then the difference between these won't show up as much, okay? And they'll be softer, okay? So let's render that. Okay, so there it is once I've got the staining on there, okay? So let me just show you uh, what I did while you were while you were asleep, okay? So here is the piece that we had, and then we put this procedural stain on it, okay? You know, the nice thing is procedurals is three-dimensional, so... Um, you know, we don't have to put mapping coordinates. I don't have total control over it, but I just really want an organic kind of splotch on it anyway. So I've got that, and then I'm toning it down. So now I toned it down here, and I thought uh, this was too, you know, I subdued it a little bit too much. So I went back on top of it there, and so there is the final look with it. And so it went from there to there once I soften the edges of where those are merging together. Okay, so it's starting to look really nice. Now, the pattern is starting to become too heavy, so we need to turn that back down, but we're getting really close to what I'm looking for in the piece. Okay, so we want to go ahead and um, we're going to turn each one of these down. Let's go to 50 on each one of these. Matter of fact, this one, I'm going to go 45 bring it down quite a bit okay now the other thing we're going to do here real quick is let's go ahead and get us uh, we need to fix go to perspective we need to fix uh, mapping coordinates on our base okay so we need to go ahead and uh, copy this one and put it on this and we'll do uh, do the same thing we'll copy this one and we'll put that one on this one okay so now we won't have that error and let's go ahead and get our metal what we want to put on here so for the metal I'm going to go with an arch and design now one of the metals I really like that they have in here pre-made metals is this um, copper that's in here it's very nice Uh, it does have a drawback uh, on this anisotropy, anisotropy uh, highlight. It's got map channel. I don't want to use that. That's a vertex map channel. You can get some kind of weird artifacts with that sometimes. In fact, you can kind of see them a little bit right in here. You can just see those. If I turn this automatic, then those will disappear. I'm not sure why they built it that way. But anyway, I turn it off. Now I want to just change the color of this, okay? I don't want it to be gold. I want kind of more of a kind of a pewter kind of color. So let's lower the um, saturation, the value, and uh, let's go for a little bit more of a pewter color, kind of like that. And so let's put that on our hardware. So let's go ahead and pick our hardware 
and then we'll put that shader on those. Okay, so let's do one more render and let's see where we're at. Okay, so uh, go ahead and switch to our camera. And let's do the final uh, adjustments that we have to do to get this to the final way that we want it. Okay, so let's uh, update that. And I'm going to pause it. Okay, there we are with the render, and I've tweaked it, and I've pulled that stain down quite a bit. Okay, so uh, let's look at what we got here. Let's copy this and go over to Photoshop, and let's paste that in. And so you can see that's come down quite a bit, so it's not in our face. Still got a nice stain in there, and nice irregularity. Okay, we've got our kind of uh, kind of pewter hardware that's on it. Okay, now probably uh, there's some other things I would do to it, but uh, right now let's go and do one last thing for this uh, lecture, and then I may come back to this la later, is let's do a little bit of staining on this pewter. So let's come up to it. Let's kind of zoom in on that. Okay, and let's just do a little region render on that. So let's go ahead and uh, save this view. And let's uh, dump this region render. And we've got our little close up of our little hinge there with this pewter. And it's, it's a real pure color right now. And so I'm going to stain that too. Okay, to kind of break it up. It looks too brand new. Okay, so uh, we'll copy that and document that also. Put that over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to take this first stain, okay, this first one, okay, and on my metal here, I'm going to go into my diffuse and I'm going to put a composite on it. Okay. Now I'm going to need a color node to bring color into this. So you go to color correction node and then I'm going to create, I'm going to copy this kind of uh, pewter color that we mixed in here and I'm going to paste it into my color node. So now it's just passing right straight through like what we've done before. But then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add another layer, and now I'm going to drop this on top of it. So it's going on top of there. And let's see how we want to mix that together. Go with that spotlight and let's take it way down so it's barely visible. Okay, now we're going to have to take the hardware, and what we want to do is we're using, just so we'll double check on this bitmaps number two. So we come over here and we copy this mapping coordinate, this number two mapping coordinate. We copy it, and now I'm going to paste it onto the hardware. And so now it will allow that texture to go onto the hardware. And so let's go ahead and do another region render with that. And now we'll have some staining, some subtle staining going on to our pewter. Okay. We just want it subtle. We don't want it too dominant. Something like that's fine just to break it up a little bit. And so now we have a good piece. So let's go ahead and switch cameras and let's go to my full camera and let's render one last rendering and then we'll have a little close up. So I'm going to pause this while this renders. Okay, class. So there's the final piece. Now I did make a little uh, last adjustment while we were paused. Here's the render, the first render I did and I still thought that was a little bit too saturated. So I put a um, color correction node after my entire node structure. I put a color correction node in there and just desaturated a little bit. And so you ended up with um, just a little less saturated. And then there's my final piece. Now, I know this tutorial took a little bit of while to do, but what you have to realize is that uh, this is really a fast process, okay? 
and I was able to get a really nice look really quick. And, and, you know, the thing is also nice about this is you can save these nodes. Okay. So I can save this node structure and then I can use it again. Okay. You can make a material library. You can save this into your library and then I could use another piece of wood. Maybe there's another piece of wood in uh, my same room, but it's a different kind of wood. And all I have to do is to come in here and go back to this first piece of wood and change what this is and it'll update all the way through there. Okay. Because all we're doing is altering it as we go from it. So these would all go through and then we could have it, you know, more of a piece of maybe a piece of pine or a piece of a dark maple or something. And you're still getting the same kind of aging to it. So hopefully this kind of showed you some different ways that you can approach things instead of having to unwrap everything. But I still get a nice look. It's a custom look, you know, and this is just going to be one of many things in the room. So we're not really focusing on it. There's some other things I can do to this too. And maybe in another video, I'll come back and show you some other uh, cool little things that you can do. But for the most part, this gets you going pretty quick and be able to surface things without having to unwrap everything. Some things we need to unwrap, but we don't need to unwrap everything. Uh, the staining method works really good. Okay. So I hope that helped you out quite a bit. Uh, just see you in the class. Bye.